Just One Peak Just One Peak is a myth you must get out of your mind. It is just one peak that gets us started in the first place. It is just one peak to tide us over a difficult patch or on a special occasion that defeats most of our attempts to stop. It is just one peak that, when porn masturbation orgasmers have succeeded in breaking the addiction, sends them back into the trap. Sometimes it's just to confirm that they do not need them anymore, and that one harem visit does just that. The after effect of porn masturbation orgasm will be horrible and convinces the porn masturbation orgasmer he will never become hooked again, but he already is. The porn masturbation orgasmer feels that something that is making him or her so miserable and guilty should have not made him or her do it, yet they did. It is the thought of that one special porn masturbation orgasm session that often prevents users from stopping. The one after your long conference trip, or the one after your hard day at work, or your fight with kids, or after an incident where your partner rejects you for sex. Get it firmly in your mind. There is no such thing as just one peak. It is a chain reaction that will last the rest of your life unless you break it. It is the myth about the odd special occasion that keeps porn masturbation orgasmers moping about it when they stop. Get into the habit of never seeing the no big deal NBD session. It is a fantasy. Whenever you think about porn or porn masturbation orgasm, see a whole filthy lifetime of spending a lot of time behind a screen just for the privilege of destroying yourself mentally and physically. A lifetime of slavery. A lifetime of hopelessness. It is not a crime if your erections are unreliable. But it is when you could be happier in the long term, but choose to sacrifice that for a short-term pleasure. It is okay that we can't always come up with something to do for the void, and it is not realistically possible to do that every time and for our entire life. Yes, we can plan for most of them, but sometimes void happens. Good times and bad times also happen irrespective of your porn masturbation orgasm anyway. But get it clearly into your mind. The porn masturbation orgasm isn't it. You are stuck with either a lifetime of misery or none at all. You wouldn't dream of taking cyanide because you liked the taste of almonds. So stop punishing yourself with the thought of the occasional no big deal porn masturbation orgasm. Ask a porn masturbation orgasmer with issues, if you had the opportunity to go back to the time before you became hooked, would you have become a porn masturbation orgasmer? The answer is inevitably, you have got to be joking. Yet every porn masturbation orgasmer has that choice every day of his life. Why doesn't he opt for it? The answer is fear. The fear that he cannot stop or that life won't be the same without it. Stop kidding yourself. You can do it. Anybody can. And it's ridiculously easy. In order to make it easy to stop masturbating to internet porn, there are certain fundamentals to get clear in your mind. We have already dealt with three of them up to now. One, there is nothing to give up there are actually only marvelous positive gains to achieve. 2. Never convince yourself of the odd NBD, no big deal, or J-O-P, just one peak, porn masturbation orgasm session. It doesn't exist. There is only a lifetime of filth and slavery. 3. There is nothing different about you. Any addicted porn masturbation orgasmer can find it easy to stop. Many porn masturbation orgasmers believe that they are confirmed addicts or have addictive personalities. This usually happens if they have read the shocking part of the brain science 
a little bit too much. I promise you, there is no such thing. No one is born with needs to masturbate to video clips before they become hooked on the drug. It is the drug that hooks you and not the nature of your character or personality. It is the effect of addictive supranormal stimuli that makes you believe that you have an addictive personality. However, it is essential that you remove this belief because if you believe that you are dependent on internet porn, you will be, even after the little porn monster inside your body is dead. It is essential to remove all this brainwashing. The shocking part of brain chemistry talks about a long-lasting Delta Fos B stable protein that forms the, quote, water slide cues in our brains. These cause the slip-lapse-relapse cycles in addicts. They are greased, kept alive, every time the addicted substance is used. Casual porn masturbation orgasmers. Teenagers, non-porn masturbation orgasmers. Heavy porn masturbation orgasmers tend to envy the casual porn user. We've all met these characters. Oh, I can go all week without a porn masturbation orgasm. It really doesn't bother me. We think, I wish I were like that. I know this is hard to believe, but no porn masturbation orgasmer enjoys being a porn masturbation orgasmer. Never forget. No porn masturbation orgasmer ever decided to become a porn masturbation orgasmer, casual or otherwise. Therefore, all porn masturbation orgasmers feel stupid. Therefore, all porn masturbation orgasmers have to lie to themselves and other people in a vain attempt to justify their stupidity. I used to be a golf fanatic. I would brag about how often I played, and I wanted to play more. Why do porn masturbation orgasmers brag about how little they masturbate? If that's the true criterion, then surely the true accolade is not to masturbate at all. If I said to you, Do you know I can go all week without carrots and it doesn't bother me in the slightest? You would think I was some sort of nutcase. If I enjoy carrots, why would I want to go all week without them? If I didn't enjoy them, why would I make such a statement? So when a user makes a statement like, I can go all week without a porn masturbation orgasm session, it really doesn't bother me. He's trying to convince both himself and you that he has no problem. But there would be no need to make the statement if he had no problem. What he is really saying is, I managed to survive a whole week without porn masturbation orgasming. Like every porn masturbation orgasmer, he was probably hoping that after this he could survive the rest of his life. But he could only survive a week. And can you imagine how precious that porn masturbation orgasm session must have been afterwards, having felt deprived for a whole week? This is why casual porn masturbation orgasmers are effectively more hooked than heavy porn masturbation orgasmers. Not only is the illusion of pleasure greater, but they have less incentive to quit because they spend less time and are less vulnerable to the health risks. They may occasionally experience porn-induced erectile dysfunction, but they are not very sure what caused it. Remember, the only pleasure porn masturbation orgasmers get is in search and seek, and then to relieve the withdrawal pangs. As I have already explained, but even that pleasure is an illusion. Imagine the little porn monster inside your body as a permanent itch so imperceptible that most of the time we aren't even aware of it. Now if you have a permanent itch, the natural tendency is to scratch it, Similarly, as our brain's reward circuits become more and more immune to dopamine and opioids, the natural tendency is to edge, escalate, binge, novelty-seek, shock-seek, etc. There are four main factors that prevent porn masturbation orgasmers from chain porn masturbation orgasming. 1. Time. Most cannot afford to. 2. 
health, in order to relieve our itches, we have to consume all free material that is available and then some. Capacity to cope with that kind of binging varies with each individual and at different times and situations in his or her life. This acts as an automatic restraint. 3. Discipline This is imposed by society, or the porn masturbation orgasmer's job, or friends and relatives, or by the porn masturbation orgasmer himself, as a result of the natural tug-of-war that goes on in every porn masturbation orgasmer's mind. 4. Imagination Lack of imagination plays down the shock, novelty, and other values of the same clip on a subjective basis. I used to think of my non-casual porn masturbation orgasming as a weakness. I couldn't understand why my friends could limit their intake. I knew I was a very strong-willed person. It never occurred to me that most porn masturbation orgasmers are incapable of chain porn masturbation orgasming. You need a very strong imagination and also extraordinarily strong penis stamina in order to do it. Some of these once a week porn masturbation orgasmers that heavy porn masturbation orgasmers tend to envy do it less frequently because physically their constitution cannot do more or because they cannot afford to porn masturbate orgasm more, or because their job, or society, or their own hatred of being hooked won't allow them to porn masturbate orgasm more. It may be of advantage at this stage to provide a few definitions. The Non-Porn Masturbation Orgasmer Someone who has never fallen for the trap, but should not be complacent. He is a non-porn masturbation orgasmer, he is a non-porn masturbation orgasmer only by luck or the grace of goodness. All porn masturbation orgasmers were convinced that they would never become hooked and some non-porn masturbation orgasmers keep trying an occasional session. The Casual Porn Masturbation Orgasmer There are two basic classifications of casual porn masturbation orgasmers. One. The porn masturbation orgasmer who has fallen for the trap but doesn't realize it. Do not envy such porn masturbation orgasmers. They are merely sampling the nectar at the mouth of the pitcher plant and, in all probability, will soon be heavy users. Remember, just as all alcoholics started off as casual drinkers, so all porn masturbation orgasmers started off as casual porn masturbation orgasmers. 2. The porn masturbation orgasmer, who was previously a heavy porn masturbation orgasmer, and thinks he cannot stop. These porn masturbation orgasmers are the saddest of all. They fall into various categories, each of which needs separate comment. The once a day porn masturbation orgasmer. If he enjoys his entitlement to orgasm, why does he use internet porn to orgasm only once a day? If he can take it or leave it, why does he bother to porn masturbate orgasm at all? Remember, the habit is really banging your head against the brick wall only to make it relaxing when you stop. The once a day porn masturbation orgasmer is relieving his withdrawal pangs for less than one hour each day. The rest of the day, although he doesn't realize it, he is banging his head against the wall and does so for most of his life. He is a porn masturbation orgasmer only once a day because either he cannot take the risk of getting caught or screwing up his brain health. It is easy to convince the heavy porn masturbation orgasmer that he doesn't enjoy it but you try convincing a casual porn masturbation orgasmer. Anybody who has gone through an attempt to cut down will know it is the worst torture of all and almost guaranteed to keep you hooked for the rest of your life. The Rejected Porn Masturbation Orgasmer This porn masturbation orgasmer demands the right to his or her orgasms every day. 
and of course, his sex partner is not always up to it. So he goes on the internet for porn initially. Once he takes the ride to fix the void, he is trapped on the most exciting water slide of novelty, shock, supernormal images, etc. He is in fact dichotomously happy with the partner's rejection. It gives him something of an excuse. If internet porn has given so much to you, why even bother to have a partner at all? Set him or her free. He is not even enjoying the porn masturbation orgasm when he has to carry his partner in his mind. At some point, he is using his real-life partner to hand him an excuse to go out into the valleys of the dark side of the internet. The Porn Diet Porn Masturbation Orgasm Or, I can stop whenever I want to. I've done it a thousand times. I have done it thousands of times. If he thinks dieting helps with his moods to get out to get women, why is he even on the diet of once every four days? How can one predict the future? What if the happenstance of meeting occurred just an hour after your scheduled porn masturbation orgasm session? Also, if he thinks this occasional cleaning the plumbing is good to relieve tension and relax, why not plumb every day? It has been proven that masturbation is not required to keep the genitals healthy. Internet porn is not required at all. Even if that may be the case, the pickup artist guru, who has read about the brain chemistry and its plasticity, will never recommend watching super stimulus porn. The truth is, he is still hooked. Although he gets rid of the physical addiction, he is left with the main problem the brainwashing. He hopes each time that he will stop for good and soon falls for the same trap again. Many porn masturbation orgasmers actually envy these stoppers and starters. They think, how lucky to be able to control it like that, to do porn masturbation orgasm when you want to and stop when you want to. What they always overlook is that these stoppers and starters aren't controlling it. When they are porn masturbation orgasmers, they wish they weren't. They go through the hassle of stopping, then begin to feel deprived and fall for the trap again, then wish they hadn't. They get the worst of both worlds. If you think about it, this is true in the lives of the porn masturbation orgasmers. When we are allowed to porn masturbate orgasm, we either take it as entitled or wish we didn't. It's only when we can't have porn masturbation orgasm that it appears to be so precious. The Forbidden Fruit Syndrome This is the awful dilemma of porn masturbation orgasmers. They can never win because they are moping for a myth, an illusion. There is one way they can win, and that is to stop porn masturbation orgasming and stop moping. The I only porn masturbation orgasm to static, tame, homemade porn, porn masturbation orgasm. Yes, we all do it to start with, but isn't it amazing how the average shock value of these clips seems rapidly to increase, and before we know it, we seem to be feeling deprived, tolerance. The novelty is lacking with static porn and we pay the mascot for a cup of grease to take the ride down the porn water slide towards the dark spirals of resentment and guilt. The worst thing you can do is to use your partner's pictures, with approval, of course, for masturbation. Why? Because you are rewiring your brain for the seeking, searching, and variety-induced dopamine flushes. The porn water slides in the brain is the Delta Force B built up due to the dopamine surges induced by internet porn. But you will find yourself having weak and unreliable erections when you are with her in real time. Another genre in this category is amateur or homemade porn. Most are fakes and you know it. 
And you are not going to settle down and finish on the very first one that hits your eyes. You are going to continue to seek and search. Remember, it's not only the orgasms, but the search and seek, the wandering, that gives the porn slide, the surge, the ride. The porn content, whether amateur or professional, or whatever, is not the issue. It is the brain flushes of dopamine during the search and seek, the building up of brain tolerance and satiation. Porn destroys normal brain operations. Masturbation confuses the muscle brain. Orgasms floods the brain. And so it should be. Better the risks involved in having one. The I have stopped but I have an occasional peak porn masturbation orgasmer. In a way, such peaking porn masturbation orgasmers are the most pathetic of all. Either they go through their lives believing they are being deprived, or more often, the occasional peak becomes two. They remain on the slippery slope, and it goes only one way. Downwards. Sooner or later, they are back to being heavy porn masturbation orgasmers. They have fallen again for the very trap that they fell into in the first place. There are two categories of casual porn masturbation orgasmers. The first is the type who masturbates to images, or clips of the latest celebrity sex tapes that hit the news. Or something they carried home from their accidental viewing at school or work. These people are really non-porn masturbation orgasmers. It's just that they feel they are missing out. They want to be part of the action. We all start off like this. Next time, watch how, after a while, the celebrity sex tape, the same star of your fantasy, is not doing it to you anymore. The more unattainable the target of your fantasy is, the more frustrating the withdrawal of the orgasm is. The second category is recently getting attention. The type can be best described by outlining a case shared online. A woman who is a professional had been using internet porn stories for many years and had never porn masturbation orgasmed more or less than one time every night. She was, incidentally, a very strong-willed lady. Most porn masturbation orgasmers would wonder why she wanted to stop in the first place. They would gladly point out to her that there is no worries of porn-induced erectile dysfunction or premature ejaculation in her case, as she is a woman. She is using not even static images, and the stories are far tamer than any they use on a daily basis. They make the mistake of assuming that casual porn masturbation orgasmers are happier and more in control. In control they may be, but happy they are not. In this case, she is not satisfied with her partner, not interested in real sex, highly irritable with her daily stress and strains. Her nearest and dearest could not find out what is bothering her. Even if she convinced herself not to be afraid of her use of internet porn by rationalizing, she still finds herself not being able to enjoy real relationships, which almost invariably involve ups and downs. Her brain's reward circuit is not able to make use of the normal de-stressor brain chemicals as she is flooding dopamine into her brain on an everyday basis. The down-regulation of her brain receptors has rendered her melancholic most times. Like me, she had a great fear of internet porn's dark side of the treatment of women before her first time. Like me, she eventually fell victim to the massive social brainwash and tried that first porn site. Like me, she can remember the foul clips of violence staged as entertainment. Unlike me, who capitulated and became a chain porn masturbation orgasmer very quickly, she resisted the slide. All you ever enjoy in porn masturbation orgasm is the ending of the craving that started before it. 
whether it be the almost imperceptible physical craving for dopamine or the mental torture caused by not being allowed to scratch the itch. Internet porn itself is a poison as far as it concerns you. This is why you only suffer the illusion of enjoying it after a period of abstinence. Just like a hunger or thirst, the longer you suffer it, the greater the pleasure when you finally relieve it. Porn masturbation orgasmers make the mistake of believing porn masturbation orgasm is just a habit. They think, if I can only keep it down to a certain level or do only on special occasions, my brain and body will accept it. I can then keep my porn masturbation orgasming at that level or cut down further should I wish to. Get it clear in your mind. The habit doesn't exist. Porn masturbation orgasming is drug addiction. The natural tendency is to relieve withdrawal pangs, not to endure them. Even to hold it at the level you are already at, you would have to exercise willpower and discipline for the rest of your life, because as your brain's reward circuit becomes immune to dopamine and opioids, it wants more and more, not less and less. As porn masturbation orgasm begins to destroy you physically and mentally, as it gradually breaks down your nervous system, your courage and confidence, your impulse controls, so are you increasingly unable to resist reducing the interval between each session. That is why, in the early days, we can take it or leave it. If we get a sign of something amiss mentally or physically, we just stop. It also explains why someone like me, who never even suffered the illusion of enjoying them, had to go on chain porn masturbation orgasming, even though every time it had become a physical torture. Don't envy that woman. When you porn masturbate orgasm only once every 24 hours, it appears to be the most precious thing on earth. The forbidden fruit syndrome. For many years that poor woman had been at the center of a tug of war. She had been unable to stop porn masturbation orgasming, yet was frightened to escalate to streaming clips. But for 23 hours and 10 minutes of every one of those days, she had to fight the temptation. She also had to fight her own lack of feelings towards her boyfriend. It took tremendous willpower to do what she did, and, as I have said, such cases are rare. But it reduced her to tears in the end. Just look at it logically. Either there is a genuine crutch or pleasure in porn masturbation orgasming, or there isn't. If there is, who wants to wait an hour or a day or a week? Why should you be denied the crutch or pleasure in the meantime? If there is no genuine crutch or pleasure, why bother paying visits to your online harem? Here is another case of a once in four days man. This is how the man described his life. Quote, I am 40 years old. I suffered porn-induced erectile dysfunction with real women, and even when I'd been doing porn masturbation orgasm. Most times, I am only rubbing it out. It has been a while since I had a full erection. Before going on the one in four days porn diet, I used to sleep soundly through the night after my porn masturbation orgasm. Now I wake up every hour of the night and all I can think about is porn masturbation orgasm. Even when I am sleeping, I dream about my favorite clips. On days after my scheduled porn masturbation orgasm, I feel pretty down and this diet would take up all my energy. My significant other would leave me alone because I am so bad-tempered, and if she can't get out, she will not have me in the house. I go for a jog outside, but my mind is obsessed with porn masturbation orgasming. On the scheduled day, I begin planning earlier in the night. I get very irritated if something happens against my plans. I'd give up on conversation and give in, only to later regret at work and at home. I am not an argumentative guy, but I don't want the topic or conversation to hold me down. I remember occasions when I'd pick up silly fights with my significant other. I then wait for ten o'clock. When it arrives, my hands are shaking uncontrollably. 
I do not start the deed right away, as there are new videos that have been added. I had to shop around. As I click around, my mind tells me that since I had starved myself for four days, I deserve a special clip, and it has to be worth the time spent searching. Eventually, I settle for one or two, but then I want it to last so that I can survive through the next four days, so I take more time to finish the deed. In addition to his other troubles, this poor man has no idea that he is treating himself to a poison. First, he is suffering the forbidden fruit syndrome. Next, he is forcing his brain to flush dopamine. His dopamine receptors are not as cut down comparatively either, but he is sliding and greasing the porn slides, seeking and searching for edging, novelty, variety, shock value, anxiety value. I must treat myself so that I can survive the next three days etc. You probably have visions of a pathetic imbecile. Not so. This man was over six feet tall and an ex-sergeant in the Marines. He was a former athlete and didn't want to become an addict to anything. However, when he returned from the war, he was trained as a techie in a veterans rehab program. When he entered the civil workforce, he was a well-paid IT professional in a bank and was given a laptop, one of the ways to ensure you take work home. It was the year that famous socialites leaked their porn videos online. There was much talk about it, and he got hooked. He has spent the rest of his life paying through the nose, and it has ruined him physically and mentally. If he were an animal, our society would have put him out of his misery. Yet we still allow mentally and physically healthy young teenagers to become hooked. You may think the above case and my notes are exaggerated. It is extreme, but not unique. There are literally thousands of similar stories. That man poured his heart out to me, but you can be sure that many of his friends and acquaintances envied him for being a once-a-week man. If you think this couldn't happen to you, stop kidding yourself. It is already happening. In any event, porn masturbation orgasmers, like other addicts, are notorious liars, even to themselves. They have to be. Most casual porn masturbation orgasmers indulge far more times and on far more occasions than they will admit to. I have had many conversations with so-called twice-a-week porn masturbation orgasmers, during which they have done it more than three times that week. If you read the Reddit or NoFap forums of casual porn masturbation orgasmers, they are either counting the days or waiting to fail. You do not need to envy casual porn masturbation orgasmers. You do not need to porn masturbate orgasm. Life is infinitely sweeter without porn masturbation orgasm. One log says, quote, It started with a simple challenge to not touch my penis for a day. And, being unable, I don't think about masturbation anymore. It doesn't cross my mind. That is possible, I promise you. And the riches that await those who are able, well, they're incredible. Teenagers are generally more difficult to cure. Not because they find it difficult to stop, but because either they do not believe they are hooked, or they are at the primary stage of the trap and suffer from the delusion that they will automatically have stopped before the secondary stage. I would like particularly to warn parents of children who loathe internet porn not to have a false sense of security. All children loathe the dark sides of porn until they become hooked. You did too at one time. Also, do not be fooled by scare campaigns. The trap is the same as it always was. Children know that internet porn is supranormal stimuli, but they also know that one visit or peak will not do it. At some stage, they may be influenced by a girlfriend or boyfriend, school friend or work colleague. You may think 
that all they need is an education in brain plasticity and that porn masturbation orgasm, including even masturbation, acts like a virus in their brain program to convince them that they could never become hooked. I find society's failure to prevent our children from becoming addicted to internet porn and other drugs to be the most disturbing of all the many disturbing facets of addiction. I beg you not to be complacent in this matter. It is necessary to protect youngsters as their brain is more plastic at that age. I strongly urge you to read the Your Brain on Porn book and educate yourself of the brain science. Even if you suspect your teenager might already be hooked, the book will provide excellent guidance to assist in gaining understanding for someone to escape. The YouTube Porn Masturbation Orgasmer The YouTube Porn Masturbation Orgasmer should be grouped with casual porn masturbation orgasmers, but the effects of a YouTube porn masturbation orgasmer are so insidious that it merits a separate chapter. It can lead to the breakdown of personal self-control. In one case, it nearly caused a split for a NoFap forum user. Quote, I was three weeks into one of my failed attempts to stop. The attempt had been triggered off by my wife's worry about my unreliable hard-ons and lack of interest. I had told her that it was not her and it was just job pressure. She said, I know you had handled the work pressure before, but how would you feel if you were me? and I had to watch someone you love systematically destroying themselves. It was an argument that I found irresistible, hence the attempt to stop. She knows that I am not cheating, but this, in a way, is as worse as that. The attempt ended after three weeks after a heated argument with an old friend. It did not register until years afterwards that my devious mind had deliberately triggered off the argument. I felt justly aggrieved at the time, but I do not believe that it was coincidence, as I had never argued with this particular friend before, nor have I since. It was clearly the little monster at work. Anyway, I had my excuse. I desperately needed a release of orgasm, and it doesn't matter how. As it happens, she was not in the mood right away, and I was in an entitlement hurry. So I convinced myself that it is okay if I restrict myself by avoiding a porn site and just stay on this side of the red line and watch only YouTube videos. But she came around as the night unfolded and wanted to make love. But I was tired and not with all of my horsepower. I then invented a headache. I could not bear to think of the disappointment this would cause my wife. Then, gradually, I returned to the old ways. Only YouTube became my new harem destination. I remember being quite pleased at the time. I thought, well, at least it is cutting my consumption down. Eventually, she accused me of continuing to ignore her in the bed. I had not realized it, but she described the times I had caused an argument and stormed out of the house. At other times... I had taken two hours to purchase some minor item and faked a sprain or something. I had made feeble excuses to cop out of the whole wooing her and etc. When I have a reliable online harem, it is even more hard. The worst thing about the YouTube porn masturbation orgasmer is that it supports the fallacy in the porn masturbation orgasmer's mind that he is being deprived. At the same time, it causes a major loss of self-respect. An otherwise honest person may force himself to deceive his loved one. It has probably happened or is still happening to you in some form. It happened to me several times. Have you ever watched the TV detective series Colombo? The theme of each episode is similar. The villain, usually a wealthy and respected businessman, has committed what he is convinced is the perfect murder and his confidence in his crime remaining undetected receives a boost when he discovers that the rather shabby and unimpressive looking detective Colombo is in charge of the case. Colombo has this frustrating practice of closing the door after finishing his interrogation, 
having assured the suspect that he is in the clear, and before the satisfied look has disappeared from the murderer's face, Columbo reappears with just one small point, sir, which I'm sure you can explain. The suspect stammers, and from that point on, we know, and he knows, that Columbo will gradually wear him down, no matter how heinous the crime. From that point on, my sympathies were with the murderer. It was almost as if I were the criminal, and that's exactly how those bouts made me feel. The tension of not being allowed to cross the red line to get my porn fix that I rightly deserve, because I am a hard-working man, and why shouldn't I, when every man does it? Entitlement. Click, click, clicking on videos that come close to the right one. Longing for the porn tube videos, and then finishing the deed. Just a limp rub-out, wondering where the pleasure was. The fear of crossing the line, losing control. The relief of returning to the bed, immediately followed by the fear that she would toss around and ask for sex, as the safe YouTube videos started not to do it for me. Desensitization and lack of novelty, and the certain knowledge that sooner or later I was bound to visit my favorite online harem. The final humiliation and shame, when that certainty became a fact, followed by the immediate return to chain porn masturbation orgasming. Oh, the joys of being a porn masturbation orgasmer.